Hey everyone, ready to talk some more chocolate? I am, as usual. So today I'm going to talk about Hawaii and Hawaiian chocolate, um, specifically Lydgate Farms. So um, Lydgate Farms is on Kauai, which is one of the northern islands in the island chain of Hawaii, and it is owned by Will and Emily Lydgate. But their family, so the Lydgate family, has a long history in, on the Hawaiian Islands. And so I thought I would tell you a little bit about that before we talked about what was happening today and what's happening with Will on the farm. So Will's family has a historical connection going back five generations. In 1865, before Hawaii was a state in the United States when it was a kingdom that had royalty. <laughs> um, his great-grandfather, William Ludgate, um, came to the island of Kauai before the sugar industry happened and he started a steelworks called Hilo Iron Works um, on the island. And later he did get involved in the sugar plantations. He was part of the creation of the Laupahoehoe sugar plantation. So he was there for many, many years ago. Um, then their name, actually the Ludgate name, changed spellings. It was kind of fluid with spelling over the years. Um, the thing that I read was that it had changed to its current spelling to honor a literary ancestor in the line. So William Ludgate's oldest son, whose name I came across two different versions, John Mortimer or John Morgan, um, he was raised in Hawaii and he moved to the island of Kauai in the 1890s. He wasn't super keen about being part of the sugar business, so he actually became a congr congregational minister so he was a preacher on the island, I think in the United Church in Lihue, but I could be wrong about that one. Um, he was also a botanist. So he was a surveyor for the Kingdom of Hawaii, later the territory of Hawaii. Uh, and he later became the managing director of a sugar plantation. He helped create an electrical plant. He was really influential on the island of Kauai. Um, as a botanist, yay botanists, <laughs> um, he surveyed uh, many plants on the island and because he was uh, one of the first westerners in there, many or some endemic Hawaiian plants are named after him, um, Polycyus lidgatii, uh, which the Hawaiian name is Ohe or Ohe Mauka. Sometimes those are used interchangeably, but they are actually different plants. I think he's named after the Ohe, not the Ohe Malka. Um, so he was very influential at the time. He also is important to the island of Kauai because when he was doing these surveys, he came across what is called a heiau. And a heiau is the Hawaiian form of a temple. It is where they practiced their Hawaiian religion and it's a sacred place to Hawaiians. And opposed to what was happening at the time of missionaries trying to eliminate the Hawaiian language and the Hawaiian culture, specifically hula, because it was evil and sinful, um, he actually tried to preserve the heiaus. And that wasn't normal at the time. That was something that wasn't happening then. So for all of these reasons, especially for preserving the heiau, there's actually a park currently on Kauai that is named after them. So if you go to Kauai, it's just a little bit north of the Lihue Airport um, called Lidgate Beach Park. And it's a very popular park. And if you live on Kauai or have visited Kauai, you've probably been to Lidgate Park. That was named after um, Will's family. So. Will's grandpa left Hawaii in 1928 and Will was actually born in California. So he grew up in the San Francisco area. But in the 1970s, 
Will's dad moved back to Kauai um, and Will would go back and forth as a child between California and Kauai and he first started working on the farm in the late 90s when he was a teenager with his sister and his father. At the time it was called the Steelgrass Farm. Um, he then went on to college. He graduated from the Berkeley College of Music. This is not the California Berkeley. It's a Berkeley with an L-E-E. -E. Um, they have campuses in Boston, New York City, and Valencia, Spain. I have no idea which one he went to, but he did graduate from that. He is a multi-instrumentalist. Instrumentalist? <laughs> uh, likes to play the bass, likes to produce music. If you check out his Twitter or his... Um, Squarespace page, you will see his music on there. So the farm first planted their uh, cacao tree in 2001. Um, something happened in 2008, but it is escaping me right now. So in 2016, Will took over the farm and renamed it from the Steelgrass Farm to the Lydgate Farms. And so he is the fifth generation in his family on Kauai. The farm is a 46 acre farm in Kapa'a on, um, so Hawaiians, they used to divvy up their land differently than we would do it. They, uh, the chiefs would divide it into a, a hua pua'a, which was a strip of land that ran from the mountains down to the ocean so that your strip of land would have fresh water and trees in the mountains and you'd have access to everything from the mountains all the way down to the fish in the ocean. And so it was a different way of dividing up land so that you got a little bit of all the land had to offer. So there on uh, Ahua Pua'a called Olehana, um, they, the farm, practices what Hawaiians would call malama aina. Um, aina means land. Malama aina means to take care of the land, to be a good steward of the land, to look after the land for future generations. So they practice natural farming. They have agroforestry where it's not just a cacao plantation. They have mixed crops they grow vanilla honey coffee and other things on the farm if you go on their homepage, they actually have a list where you can see all of the uh, plant species that are growing on the farm and they use organic fertilizer um, i've got a little bit more to tell you about hawaiian stuff that has to do with their labels and symbols and things like that um, hawaii actually has a very complicated and interesting history as do most places that were colonized um, or subject to imperialism. <laughs> um, it's interesting particularly with the sugar uh, plantations which are no longer on Hawaii. They can't um, economically run in Hawaii anymore but the history of Hawaii is intermingled very much with these crops that are grown on the islands. So if you ever have time to read a history of Hawaii, it's fascinating and awful and just worth your time. Um, all right, so let's, I think that's all I want to tell you about that for now. Let's flip, flip the camera around and we will take a look at some of the chocolate that I have from them. And we'll talk about some of the symbolism of um, on their wrappers. <laughs> okay. All right, so I actually have a few products from them right now. I have their 70% Hawaiian sea salt, a plain 70%, a 50% milk, and a 70% dark with palm blossom honey. I'm sure that honey comes from their farms as well. So I'm going to take a look at the 70, just the 70% dark. Oh, and I also have uh, this, which is made in cooperation with another um, business on Kauai called Monkey Pod Jam. This is cacao nectar jelly. It's kind of fun. I'll talk a little bit about that later. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about 
their wrapper and this symbol right here. So Will was obviously aware of Hawaiian history and Hawaiian culture having been being the fifth generation. And so he worked with what's called a kumu, which is a Hawaiian cultural teacher or practitioner of traditional Hawaii methods. And um, they developed this together. So this is the symbol for Lydgate Farms. This one here is a um, cross section of a cacao pod. It represents chocolate and agriculture, health, and prosperity because beans were once used for money. This one here is a callow leaf. Um, callow or taro. Uh, if you've ever been to Hawaii, maybe you've had poi. This is what poi is made out of, taro. Um, taro is the root from this plant. This represents native culture. It represents community. It represents Hawaiian culture. Uh, this one here, the lines, represents the five generations of the family that have lived in the islands and they're kind of directional in that they're pointing forward. They're always moving with forward progress. This is their uh, family crest, Lydgate family crest. Um, this one here, I believe is why. I think it has fresh water and um, giving life. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is that the uh, longitude and latitude, this one won't affect people much, but this one here, you always hear about cocoa grows within the 2020 zone. Ha! <laughs> nope! <laughs> uh, 22 degrees north this cocoa is growing, so the growers in Hawaii are pushing that 20 degree zone a little bit further north. Uh, what else? So here's a map of the Hawaiian island chain. This island up here, that one right there is Kauai. Um, this one is Oahu, the one that most people visit. This one is the big island with the volcanoes and then you have Maui. Um, yeah, so let's see what else is on this farm. Oh, they list the season. So this is harvest season, spring 2020. Um, let's see what else it says here. Ah, so you can actually, when there's not COVID going around the world and things reopen again, you can actually take a tour of their farm. Um, that's actually the number one selling product for Lydgate Farms. It is their um, three-hour tasting tour and then it's followed by their dark chocolate tasting pack online. Let's see, they got the ingredients. Cacao beans, organic sugar, organic cocoa butter. So simple ingredients in their bars. All right, so let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so chocolate bars are packaged using recycled, pa recycled papers. Nice. Oh, it's like a pocket. Oh, nice. Okay, so this has got... Oh, this is... Okay. This has got a lot of Hawaiian symbolism on it, too. So here's... This is... I believe this is why. This is the Kalo or Taro. I would say this is um, on the bottom because... It's the foundation. The Hawaiian culture is the foundation of their uh, business. And then you have the generations. I would say that one's water too. That's probably why you have the cocoa pods. So very cool. This kind of art is called um, kapa. Kapa is made from, it's like a, a bark, a mulberry bark that they hammer and pound out and then they paint on it with the symbols. It's very, very beautiful and very symbolic art. Ah, okay, so they talk about Malama Aina on here. Um, very good, kapa, bark cloth. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at this bar. 
Um, if you didn't know, my family lived on Hawaii for eight years, and so we have a soft spot in our heart for all things Hawaiian. <laughs> all right, so here's the Lidgate Farms bar. They actually don't make their own chocolate. Manoa Chocolate on Oahu produces their chocolate for them. So they send the beans from Kauai to Oahu and Moana. Uh, Moana. Manoa Chocolate makes the uh, bars themselves and packages them. All right, let's see if we can hear a good snap. This was, in case you've forgotten since I've been talking too much, this is their 70% dark spring 2020 harvest. Let's hear if we can hear a snap. Not bad, pretty good snap. I don't know if you heard that. Take a look at, looks good, nice fine grain. No obvious problems with the bar. So it looks good there. Let's check the aroma. I'm going to release some of the volatile compounds by just warming up the cocoa butter with my thumb a little. Cocoa butter's melting point is very close to human body temperature, so I can just do this and warm it up and then we'll smell and then we'll taste. Okay, so when I taste this, um, or when I smell it, I get fudgy chocolate and maybe it's stone fruit. And then when I taste it, it's bright and fruity and acidic, um, a little bit of apricot. About halfway through or near the end, you get it becomes more creamy, milky, and then there's another pop of bright acidity in there that uh, shows up at the end. Ever so slightly astringent aftertaste in my mouth, and ever so slightly bitter, so not bad. A nice, nice 70%. Um, I might like to try the milk too. Let's try the milk bar. We'll compare the color of the two. So here's the ingredients for the milk bar. Cacao beans, organic whole milk powder, organic sugar, and organic cacao butter, cocoa butter. I don't know if the cocoa butter is from their farm as well or if they supplement it from somewhere else. Okay. So here you can see the color difference between a 70% and a 50% milk. The milk is lighter and got a more rosy tint to it. Oh, but it's still got a good snap for milk. That's actually a really good snap for milk. So nice snap, no obvious defects, nice fine grain, consistent. Yeah, the bar looks good. I would be shocked with anything else coming out of Manoa right now. <laughs> Manoa's got a handle on the chocolate making. All right, let's smell it and see. What so it when tastes. I smell this one, I get chocolate fudge, sweet milk, and nuts. It smells like walnuts, like a almost like a fudge brownie with walnuts in it. When I taste it. It's nice. It's got a cooling sensation in my mouth. That's the cocoa butter showing up. And it's got a fudginess to it, a sweet milk, um, a, a little bit of nuts, walnuts, or maybe some other kind of nut, and maybe a little bit of a creme fraiche kind of flavor in there, like a sour cream, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with creme fraiche, but a little milder than sour cream. So nice. A nice milk bar out of Lidgate. So let's flip the camera around and we'll finish up. Hmm, I had to pop one more piece of my mouth. <laughs> so I also mentioned that I had this cacao jelly. I didn't show you it when I had the camera flipped around. Um, it's very, I don't know if you can see it, it's um, liquid, very viscous. And it's, if you've ever sucked the mus mucilage off the outside of a seed, it's very true to that flavor. Kind of a lychee kind of flavor. Maybe if you're not familiar with lychee, you'd describe it more as an apple juice kind of flavor. Um, very, I enjoy it. I have been putting it on waffles and English muffins and eating it for breakfast. It's quite, quite yummy. So 
um, that's a nice collaboration that they have going on with uh, Monkey Pod Jam. And you can get that both on the Lidgate site and the Monkey Pod Jam site. So all of their stuff is 100% Hawaiian as far as I know. Farm to bar. So everything's being made in Hawaii. There are challenges to running a business in Hawaii, that's for sure. There are some good things about having a chocolate business in Hawaii. Every, basically, like you do everything right there. But there are challenges to basically living in Hawaii. It's very expensive. You obviously have to ship your chocolate out if you want it to go anywhere other than the islands. Um, but it seems like by diversifying his... By, uh, will diversifying and including agritourism that he is doing pretty good pre-COVID. <laughs> I don't think anyone's doing, well, I don't know. COVID threw everyone for a loop. So I hope that they will continue to produce some good stuff. Um, Hawaii is the only place in the United States where cacao is commercially grown. People are growing cacao on the mainland. So the continental... United States. There are some trees growing in Florida and stuff, but they're not commercially producing chocolate. The earliest record we have of chocolate in Hawaii is written record. 1831, a German botanist um, has recorded seeing it in a um, monk's garden. And then the, in 1850, there's a record of a physician having a house on Oahu and he plants cacao and that land is actually now part of the Foster Botanical Gardens and that cacao is still there. So I don't know if it's the same cacao tree, but they still have cacao growing in Foster Botanical Gardens. So it's been growing there for a while. There are some things that say that it was brought there earlier by native Polynesians that there's some in the wild here and there. I don't know that that has been confirmed, but that is some of the things that people say. So yeah, Hawaii is super interesting <laughs> and an awesome place to live and a great place to visit. If you're ever on Kauai, hit up Lidgate Farms. You'll get a tour, you'll see chocolate growing on trees and um, learn about other um, where other foods we eat come from. So that's all I have for Lidgate Farms this week. Uh, I hope you will like and subscribe so that next week you will get another delivery of chocolate stories in your inbox. See you then!